to start. Thank you very much and a very warm welcome uh, to this uh, lab debate on green finance for sustainable future in Africa, powering uh, clean, affordable energy solutions for all. I'm uh, Søren Andreasen, the general manager of the Association of European DFIs, and I'm very pleased uh, to uh, be here today uh, with our uh, excellent panel um, to, uh, to discuss uh, how to meet the energy demand uh, in Africa, which is high and growing, as, um, as was just mentioned in the introduction. Uh, infrastructure investment is going to be critical for the recovery and continued growth of African economies. And at the same time, it's very important context here that the number of people living without access to electricity uh, globally has uh, recently fallen below uh, 1 billion people for the first time, uh, falling uh, 30 to 40 percent over the last decade, which is very encouraging. But three quarters of these people live in Africa, and it's uh, incredibly important that we continue to improve access to electricity, which is so important for, um, for the lives and, and livelihoods of, um, uh, of people. So uh, we will, uh, in this debate, um, discuss how to tackle um, uh, with sustainable finance uh, both the green energy transition in Africa while uh, promoting access to affordable electricity. And I'm very, very pleased to welcome our panelists uh, for this uh, discussion. Uh, we have uh, Ambroise Fayol, uh, Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Good to see you, Ambroise. Nice to see you. We have, we have in the studio, I believe in Brussels, uh, Carla Montesi, uh, who is the European Commission's Director for Green Deal and the Digital Agenda in the Director General for International Partnership. Um, hi, Carla. Very nice hello. to see you. It's great to be able to combine uh, the virtual and uh, and uh, and real life uh, format here. And also very welcome, uh, very warm welcome to you, Cherry Deo, uh, CEO of Meridium, which is a private infrastructure asset manager active in in Africa. Welcome to all of you, and I would like to uh, start our debate by uh, turning to, to each of you, starting with you, Ambroise, um, to hear your reflections on what the key challenges and opportunities are when we look um, at green finance for a sustainable future in, in Africa. And uh, if, if you would share your reflections and also mention what uh, the EIB, as the EU's climate bank, is uh, doing in this area. Thank you very much. I hope you you can hear me well. Um, pleasure to be to be to be with you, and um, and I must say that I thank a lot uh, the European Commission for for the invitation. Um, maybe uh, two words of context first. Um, when we are talking about uh, this this very important question, we need to remind that uh, Africa is the first continent to suffer from the effect of climate change while being the least to contribute to it. And that's something that uh, for the Europeans has uh, a specific, uh, a specific uh, consequence in terms of being involved in, uh, in Africa for, uh, for, for the challenges related to, uh, uh, to clean energy. And the second one is that we expect the population to double by 2050 in Africa. And of course, with that, there will be a big need for electri uh, electricity supply increase. So we need also to prepare for that at a time when the installed um, electricity generation capacity in the whole sub-Saharan Africa, to give you an example, is about currently 15% of that of Germany. So the context is really a context where we have a, a few challenges to, uh, to, to overcome. And let me say that most of these challenges are not specific to developing countries and to Africa in particular. Uh, most of uh, them, some of them are also not specific to at all to uh, clean energy. Uh, but uh, these are the, the, the challenges that we are facing. And then I will end up with, for me, two uh, big opportunities, actually. Um, the first challenge is that uh, we need to have more of the bankability of local energy uh, utilities. 
When you look at the projects that we have financed in Africa and that have been big successes, like for the wind power Lake Turkana in, uh, in, in, in Kenya, that now offer around a third of Kenya's uh, energy mix. Or when you look at uh, the project that, uh, that, that Thierry knows well, with, that has been done in the context of IFC's initiatives called uh, Scaling Solar. Um, and that we have done, in, for example, in, in, in Senegal. I mean, you see that the starting point is to have uh, uh, local energy utilities that, uh, that, 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 that have uh, a good credit worthiness. And for that, what we also can, can, can gain is uh, having the trust of investors, having appropriate invest investments. Maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, the, the kind of de-risking that we are trying at EIB to um, uh, to promote is is one of the one, one of the instruments that we can use to uh, to deal with the, the question of uh, bankability. Uh, the second one is uh, not specific to uh, to uh, um, uh, to the energy projects. It is uh, the enabling environment for for investment. I mean, this is a well known uh, well known issue, and for that. What we can try to do, and we do that at TIB with the European Commission, of course, and many other institutions in the development finance institutions in the multilateral development banks, do is uh, is technical assistance. The third one is, and it is more and more important, is access to concessional finance. And actually, the the blending model that uh, has been developed with the European Commission by us uh, at, at the Bank of the European Union, the EIB, has been quite effective. And if I can just give one one example, we have developed in the Gambia a solar plant, and we have decided that because we wanted that it would be available solar energy in all uh, the the throughout the country. Uh, and, and Gambia is a small country, but but still it was not that uh, that easy to implement. We have decided that all the schools and all the uh, uh, the uh, the health facilities in the country would be covered with a solar panel. And this is the kind of thing that can can be really helped by the concessional finance that uh, that uh, that allows also to have a better better approach to the to the projects. The first challenge is access to capital markets, and maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, but uh, it is true that uh, while climate change uh, uh, aspects are, are global challenges, uh, access to capital market is uh, more an issue for, uh, for, uh, for, for Africa, for example. And this is something that you see in one element that is becoming very important for, for the climate action, which is uh, the green bonds and the access to uh, to, uh, to green bond financing uh, through uh, through uh, climate awareness bonds or whatever the, 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 the approach is, which is rare in Africa, and we try to to find solutions to overcome that. And the last one is is uh, because of the the lag that uh, that uh, that I have mentioned is also scaling up. What can we do to try to replicate initiatives that work? What can we do? This is a challenge that we have everywhere, and we have the same in, in, in Europe. Uh, but this is something that, uh, that, that, that will be a recipe for success. Now, when I look at opportunities, uh, I would just mention two. Um, the first one uh, is, I mean, the, the plummeting cost of turning sunlight into, um, in, into electricity is something that is very, very impressive. The cost of, uh, of uh, PV module prices has fallen 90% since uh, 2010. And the cost of uh, generating also electricity has, has fallen. So the investment costs are down. The cost of generating uh, electricity are down sharply. Uh, that is something that certainly will benefit uh, geographies uh, in, in developing countries, and in particular in Africa. And the second, uh, the second opportunity that I think we should say is, is the opportunity of the global consensus. Uh, we've had uh, the Americans coming back to the Paris Agreement. You see in all the meetings of uh, leaders of the world the fact that there is a big commitment to help, uh, to help uh, develop uh, projects 
developed funding for, uh, for, for, uh, for clean energy. You see the, 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 the mobilization everywhere. And I think this is an opportunity that really can change the way we uh, will be successful in increasing the level of clean energy in developing countries. Very good. Thank you so much, Ambroise. And I, I think you are exactly right about the momentum that we are seeing now and the commitment of large financial institutions uh, to play our part. Uh, Carla, I would like to turn to you and, and ask you to share your own reflections and also uh, uh, perhaps reflect on, on what Ambroise has said. Um, the European Commission has launched the idea of a Green Deal, uh, the Green Deal uh, going global. And it would be very interesting to hear about your plans uh, to help unlock and de-risk investment uh, to, uh, to reach our um, energy access and climate goals. So please, Carla. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Soren, for your question. I'm very happy to, to join to this debate. Now, you mentioned immediately the question on uh, how European green going global. And uh, I think we are uh, been listening during the whole day about the Green Deal. We know that it's our economic uh, strategy for green, just and inclusive growth. It's our blueprint for the COVID-19 recovery that was mentioned just at the beginning. It is about, I would say, a leading contribution from Europe to face the climate change. Now, um, the idea is for Europe to be climate neutral by 2050. So it's a first at all in engagement from Europe for Europe. But as we have already been able to discuss, we know that Europe account only for 10% of the world greenhouse gas emission. So it's clear that if we really want to contribute to fight again climate uh, change, we cannot tackle climate and environmental crisis alone. The only way to reach our ambition is clearly to work through cooperation, to a strong cooperation with our partners, with a dialogue outside Europe, and in particular with our partner countries. Now, you mentioned the energy. Of course, when you look to the Green Deal, energy will be clearly at the heart of the Green Deal. And of course, speaking about Africa, it's clearly the most important sector for the development of Africa. I think Fayol has already mentioned the, the, the situation that we have in Africa. Very often we say that Africa is facing a paradox for the energy sector. African countries are among the world richest in sustainable energy resources, but we know that we have around 600 million Africans that have no access to electricity. And the Sub-Saharan Africa remains the, the region with the largest energy access deficit. So this is something that we cannot accept also because we know very well the importance that energy poverty can have also on the human and on the economic development. And this is the reason why the energy is clear a priority for our international cooperation. Now, you were mentioning what we want to do in, uh, from our cooperation with our partner countries in Africa. Allow me to say that during the last 70 years, we have allocated more than 3 billion euro for sustainable energy cooperation with Africa. We have worked essentially on improving governance, improving reform in the energy sector because they are crucially the key in order to achieve progress. But we have also worked in order to stimulate, to facilitate, to incentivize investment also in the domain of the energy. And as you know, we have launched the, the external investment plan. We have launched the, the first EFCD, the European Sustainable Development Fund, creating new financial instrument, putting together blended finance and the guarantee facility to encourage, to de-risk investment in the energy sector. 
Now, I know very well that your question, it's not about the past, but it's about the future. So allow me to say that uh, clearly look into Africa, that it's the continent, that it's a clear priority in our partnership. Uh, allow me to say that uh, the idea is uh, to work through a comprehensive multi-sector, multi-stakeholder investment package uh, with Africa. We are working with Africa to prepare this big investment package where we clearly want to include an important comprehensive Africa-European Union Green Energy Initiative. This will be our key to support the green transition also in Africa. The focus clearly, I will say, because of your already mentioned Paris Agreement, our priorities clearly will be renewable and uh, energy efficiency. And of course, this in the context of growth, jobs, and the, the economic transformation that our African partners want to, to achieve. We are in the same path. Now, if I want to estimate the, the number of this initiative, allow me to say that the ambition that we want to have is to facilitate access to electricity to at least 50 million African citizens. And we would like to facilitate the creation of 15, 100 gigawatts of additional power generation capacity from renewable sources by 2013. This is our ambition. This is our ambition that we hope to finalize with our African partners and to launch during the next uh, summit, African Union, European Union. So, of course, in all this, and I'm quite sure that we will be back on this, uh, cooperation funds alone will never be enough, I would say, to respond to the investment that are needed in Africa to, to answer to Today, our SDG 7 access to energy. Um, what we need is, of course, the private sector. And we hope that with our future new instrument, Global Europe, uh, where we will have finalized important package for facilitate investment from the private sector. Of course, we are clear foreseeing the energy sector and the renewable energy sector has a priority and we hope clearly to be able to progress and uh, in this domain with uh, uh, accompanying our private sector in all this ambition. Over to you. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Carla. And uh, it's impressive to hear about these ambitious plans. And of course, uh, you're exactly right uh, that um, we must mobilize also private capital to realize these very bold uh, objectives uh, for the African infrastructure sector and, and the green energy transition uh, in that sector. And that's also the perfect segue uh, over to you, uh, Chiri. So uh, as, a, as an experienced um, asset manager in infrastructure in, in Africa, you of course have a very strong perspective on, on the market that we are talking about. And uh, it would be great to hear about what you see as the, the key challenges and, um, and opportunities in green energy in, in, in Africa from your vantage points. Um, so, um, so please, Thierry. Well, thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to participate today in this uh, quite uh, important debate. Um, I mean, first, I, before I talk about challenges, I, I, I don't want to, to repeat what has been said before, in particular with the numbers and the figures that uh, Amwa has mentioned, but I think it is a huge opportunity, and I think it's worth uh, repeating to investors because it outweighs uh, the perception of risk that is attached to Africa generally for investments. And, and again, we'll get into this a bit later, the partnership that is existing between private investors and uh, institutions like, like the Commission or the European Investment Bank is actually quite helpful in, in making this perception uh, uh, less of a, of a hurdle. 
But to, to, to come to the challenges, I think I would uh, sort of split things in, in two buckets, if you want. Uh, one is, is really about strategy for green energy access in Africa and outreach to make this accessible to, to everyone and a number of issues that are related to that. I think one key thing when thinking of Africa, and I think that drives quite a lot of the solutions, is the issue of the affordability uh, of, of this power um, while being accessible to, to, to everyone. Affordability drives public policies, reforms in uh, uh, local public utilities, the guarantee systems that and subsidy systems that sometimes um, governments in Africa have uh, actually uh, put on fossil fuel energy. Um, and, and so that does trigger uh, a fairly huge uh, policy discussion and policy engagement uh, uh, around uh, the provision of new green energy. The, the second one, which is often um, uh, forgotten about, but not always, is the grid. Uh, most African countries, even in areas that are accessible, uh, do not have sufficiently robust grids to be able to absorb uh, a, a, an increased capacity in terms of intermittent energy like wind or solar uh, and other type of uh, green energy if they're not base load. So, so that is uh, a, a, an issue which is often tackled uh, uh, rather too late, um, but that does need to trigger discussion on on the comprehensive strategy in terms of uh, every country uh, trying to develop their capacity uh, in terms of uh, of green energy and access. And the last, of course, uh, uh, there are a number of remote areas that uh, would actually not be affordable to reach out with the grid and off-grid solutions have actually developed in the recent years to, to be able to provide access to energy to the furthest uh, uh, remote uh, villages uh, in Africa. And I think this also needs uh, uh, further further development. So that, that is, on I would say, on the bucket of strategies where there are a number of uh, policy and focuses that needs to be put on these three topics of affordability, robustness of the grid, um, and, and the off-grid strategies as well in this country. Uh, when it comes to delivery, which is sort of my, my second um, set of hurdles, but where a number of solutions have been provided over the years, and, and, and the real issue is scaling. Uh, first of all, scaling project preparation and capacity uh, for governments to be able to procure these projects. Uh, Ambroise earlier mentioned the uh, Scaling Solar uh, Initiative of IFC that supports government in terms of uh, actually uh, having solar capacity being bidded out and, and reaching, uh, thanks to our partnership between private and concessional funds and blended finance solutions uh, with the European Investment Bank in particular, uh, very affordable tariffs uh, for, for those countries like Senegal and, 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 and others. Um, the capacity building is, is something, I guess, we, we dwell on for decades. Uh, <laughs> we try and try and try again. Um, and, and there are a number of project preparation facil facilities available in Africa. But the, the, the real issue in the capacity building uh, is the people. Uh, it's, it's perhaps less the money to prepare those projects that the uh, human capital that is necessary uh, within governments to be able to to propose to to prepare projects uh, with the support of the French government, the the European Investment Bank as well. Uh, a year and a half ago was launched a uh, the Africa Infrastructure Fellowship Program to actually support uh, key project deliverer within government in understanding PPAs, PPPs, and all structures being able to accelerate this deployment. Uh, first cohort in the middle of COVID was 10 uh, attendees from 10 different countries. Uh, the demand is 120 
uh, this year yeah. for from 23 countries. So there is a huge uh, demand on the side of public authorities and government to really get actual support to develop their human capital. The, the second, um, uh, which is not a hurdle, but to me a more of a solution, is almost nothing is possible given the perception of risk, given some of the administrative difficulties, given this project uh, preparation capacity issue, without a true partnership. Uh, between public and private institutions uh, from Europe in particular to provide multiple type of solutions. And when we think about blending finance, is blending finance with multiple purposes. I mean, obviously, reducing risk and risk perception is uh, a, a fundamental goal for blended finance. But when uh, I see what some, what some of, the, of the DFIs and the bank uh, actually can achieve, uh, to give you an example, when we launched our first investment fund for Africa, uh, which was about 550 million uh, euro uh, equity fund, 25% uh, of this being brought by those institutions allowed us to bring investors from all over Europe uh, to bring the other 75% of it. So mobilization and acceleration of mobilization is, is also a fundamental goal uh, to really bring uh, uh, LPs that actually are craving for green and impactful investment uh, nowadays uh, into into Africa. So, so these are uh, quite fundamental hurdles and solutions that I think are, are being deployed today and just needs more scaling up. So uh, uh, I'm less worried about the hurdles. The opportunity is great. And in a way, uh, scaling up is all we are all about. You're absolutely right. And uh, and I think I'm very much convinced you're right also about the potential to mobilize uh, private capital to to tackle these opportunities and, and these challenges. I would like to pick up on on something that all of you uh, referred to. So we have in the in the panel here today um, uh, in the European Commission, um, uh, the you know large uh, technical and financial corporation uh, capacity. We have with the European Investment Bank uh, the the development banking uh, side, and then and then we have uh, uh, with you, uh, Thierry, the uh, the private uh, investor. And I would like to to drill down a, a bit more in our in in our discussion on the kinds of partnerships that will help us uh, succeed. Um, we have about fifteen minutes left, so I so I'd I'd, I'd love if you would uh, uh, get straight to the point and and offer some short suggestions. You know, in the partnerships that institutions like yours uh, have with each other and can build further with each other, what are the what are the um, uh, key focus areas that we should uh, that we should have? Which are the instruments that we should prioritize, and how can we help along innovation and risk sharing to catalyze uh, these opportunities for um, for for green finance uh, to move uh, forward the energy space in Africa? And I'd like to start with you, Ambroise, if you allow. Uh, sure, um, I'll, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Son. I'll be. I'll be brief um, because uh, actually, what uh, what I what I wanted to say has already been largely said by uh, by by my by my colleagues, um, and 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 clearly, you have a combination of uh, how to use the best possible way. Uh, the, the new global Europe that Carla was referring, and uh, it is it is uh, it is a, a great instrument. Uh, we also have seen during the COVID crisis that with Team Europe, we have been able to bring together uh, the Commission, the member states, the the, the DFIs of the member states, um, the EIB, the EBRD. I mean, all those institutions working together to uh, to provide the. The, the best possible support to uh, African economies and the health system. I mean, we can do the same kind of, uh, of thing with probably the same kind of success 
uh, with uh, with uh, with with the green the green deal applied in uh, in in Africa. Now, concretely, uh, when you look at the kind of in initiatives that have been taken, I will just uh, uh, mention three of them uh, to 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 see what we can do. We can do uh, initiatives to try to support private sector climate action projects. And one example that you know well, Soren, is the Interact Climate, uh, climate Change Facility that we have uh, developed with 13 European DFIs. We can do also projects. We are trying to support bankable and sustainable renewable energy IPP projects, especially through TA. And this is a project that we do through the European Guarantee for uh, Renewable Energy. Uh, and there is also a, pro a new program that has been uh, launched by the European Commission. This is called Desiree for more innovative projects in renewable energy and energy efficiency sectors. So there are many partnerships that are in place. Uh, the issue is, as, uh, as Thierry said, to, uh, to scale them and to try to make them the best cost effective for also the, 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 the investment uh, world because uh, capital is scarce, uh, resources for the, for the European Union are scarce as well. And we need to, to use them the best possible to get the maximum leverage if we want scalability. And leverage with, of course, the private sector. Thank you, Soren. Thank you very much, Ambroise. Um, Carla, would you like to reflect also on the partnerships that will be important to realize the Green Deal um, in Africa? So, uh, Ambroise already mentioned the partnership that we want, it's clearly it is Team Europe uh, partnership, it is a Team Europe approach, strongly working together, y European institution, member states, development financial institution with our partner countries. All building together with a strong cooperation, we can really realize impactful uh, action and the, and the program and that this will be our key uh, approach in our in the implementation of our future financial instrument the global europe where we have already foreseen all the instrument that we have uh, mentioned during our discussion could be the technical assistance but could be also all the blended the, the guarantee facility that will help us to leverage the private sector to support the to facilitate the investment in the in the green deal sector including of course the energy sector from government and from private sector allow me to to add just one point uh, to underline what Thierry and support what Thierry clearly said that uh, it's clear also for us than uh, to make this green transition happen we have to work tomorrow we are also working today but we will need really work tomorrow on reinforcing this capacity local capacity in continue to improve this regulatory environment that will be key for all the future investment to facilitate the preparation of bankable projects because at least this bankable project will remain a key and important uh, um, blockage in our investment and of course to improve our access to affordable finance. So really very much support the key elements that Thierry mentioned because are the crucial element if we really want to, seek, to succeed in moving through green transition. Over to you, Sam. Well, thank you very much, Carla. Do you, I, I was wondering, because both um, Ambroise and Thierry uh, brought up the importance of, um, in a sense, re reducing the risk for investors by, um, by working at the level of policy and, and regulatory capacity, and in a, so reducing the risk for all investors by, by fixing some of the challenges or addressing some of the challenges there. Is there more that you can say about, about how you will uh, use your instruments in the European Commission or the partnerships uh, available to us to, to tackle those challenges? I would say that we will use all our instruments available, could be the technical assistance, could be grants to support uh, 
our countries in the reform process, in the governance process, could be all the new financial instruments that we have mentioned, the EFCD plus, that we will be a huge amount that is foreseen in the future instrument of global Europe, but we will foreseen also our diplomatic diplomacy dialogue. We will use our trade policy. All the instruments that are available and they are in our hands will be used in order to progress towards the green transition. Very good. I, I, I do think that these uh, very significant efforts are also important to, to the signals uh, that we are able to send to the wider capital markets for uh, for private investors um, to to join and uh, and of course uh, uh, Thierry with with Meridium uh, you are at the forefront of this but I, I would like to ask uh, you and Amboise to reflect on uh, both how uh, private capital markets uh, can support the goals that we've been talking about in the Green Deal uh, but also um, but also how we make sure that, that what we can do from the policy through the risk sharing uh, to the new types of partnerships that we are launching, how we can, how we can do enough that uh, the capital markets come into play in a, in a much uh, bigger way in Africa than they have in, in many countries so far. So, so maybe first you, Chiri, and, and then um, Amboise to have, share some reflections on this. Pretty big question. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll, I'll answer simply. I think two things I, I wanted to say that we can be, I mean, Team Europe can be very proud of all the instruments that are in place and the way that they're be, be being scaled up. And of course, we can scale, scale a bit more. Um, one uh, thing that I see, especially when it comes to capital market, but it's also true with the partnership with the receiving, uh, receiving countries, is our ability to engage at a level where it is very clear what we're bringing. Um, and, uh, and I think we have reached a level of sophistication and efficiency to tackle all this risk sharing and different with this different type of instrument, but often they're not very well known or understood from either private sector uh, players or even from governments that could benefit uh, from it. So this engagement has to also scale up if we want to scale up the volume. Uh, so Team Europe can really offer very clear support and services to 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 really boost these goals. The the second one on on capital market um, is is actually linked to this to this scale uh, today. It's much easier for private equity investors a little bit with a, books, a big spoon now. It used to be a small spoon, but a big spoon now <laughs> uh, to go and develop projects uh, and, and new energy capacity uh, and, and, and support this transition in Africa. If you want to bring the large volumes of the capital market, scale is necessary. Uh, standardization is necessary and and I don't and I'm the first person not to be an advocate of standardizing everything because I know it is very very difficult but we we also need to find ways to to basically be able to for example securitize the volume of existing projects that are available on the continent and with that use that with blended finance and do other things uh, I mean, typical of the uh, MCPP programs of the IFC for debt, but this can also be done for, for equity. But scale and a little uh, sort of standardization would be, uh, would be uh, uh, necessary. One initiative that I would, uh, to finish, uh, put on that is this fast infra uh, uh, attempt to define a sustainability a standard and label uh, for project in Africa that could actually help uh, uh, the capital markets in, in being uh, deployed. Thanks very much, Thierry. I, I, I do think if we are going to reach the goal set out, we clearly, we clearly do need to, to increase the size of the spoon, as you say, and, and to find ways of bringing uh, the capital markets in. Ambroise, I'm sure from EIB, you also have a perspective on, on this challenge. You mentioned green bonds before, but, yeah, but how, do you, how do you see this evolving? 
Indeed, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Soren. And, uh, and actually, I would just complement uh, what, what Thierry said because I very much agree with, uh, with everything he, he mentioned. Um, the, the, the two things I would like to say first is on green bonds. I mean, cl uh, climate change is a global challenge and green bonds are in advanced economies. So what we need to do, and this is something we try to do really at, at EIB uh, in partnership with others, uh, and I'll mention one initially in particular, is to do more with African institutions, African financial institutions, uh, to help them also in, uh, because they also want to do, uh, to do more on, on financing green projects. And what we have done with Amundi, uh, a European asset manager, and, and, uh, and IFC, is an initiative where we have decided to try to develop the green bond market in Africa and, and in other emerging economies. And by doing that, what we have decided to do is to buy green bonds issued by financial institutions uh, from uh, emerging countries that apply the green bond standards. And we help them also to uh, look at, to be sure that what you finance is green in green projects as well. And by doing that, we wanted also to show that there is, there is an interest also in advanced economies, but also in emerging economies, from investors to buy these uh, this, this bonds. And we think that there is a big increase in the size of the green bond market in, uh, in Europe and, and, uh, and America and Asia. Uh, there should be also one in, in Africa, and we think this is a good opportunity. And the second thing that uh, Thierry, uh, Thierry mentioned, and there was a very interesting uh, initiative uh, last month at, in Paris, uh, with the French president and many, uh, many presidents actually, is the lack of equity in, in Africa to finance the African growth. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I would like to, to thank you for this uh, very interesting debate. Uh, our time is, uh, is almost up before we return to the rest of the program. I just want to reflect that the, we are hearing here from, from your three institutions a very high level of ambition to mobilize green finance for a sustainable future in Africa and a clear signal that Team Europe, uh, with all the, the varied instruments and partnerships and capacities, is ready to uh, to deliver on these plans and to work very closely with uh, private sector partners to realize these goals over time, also broadening uh, these uh, efforts into the capital markets. And I think a very clear message just to end uh, to partner countries in Africa that um, that they have a very strong partner in, in Team Europe. So thank you very much for, for, uh, for your very uh, interesting discussion and contributions. And, uh, and have a lovely rest of, uh, of your European Development Day. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye to you all.